and I'm going to give you an opportunity to do that. But I just want to say right now, He is the way, the truth, and the life. You've tried many other ways. This is the way. And, and right now, the Holy Spirit is saying, and it's you I'm talking to. I want you to surrender your life to the Lord Jesus. He is Lord. And it's a very simple message. It's a simple decision. But it's a life-changing decision to make today. Father God, would you speak by your word into our lives today? We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you be seated, please? Thank you. Jasper and the, and the team this morning, we appreciate your leading us. Thank you. This morning, I want to share a message with you about the essential message of the book of Galatians. We're going through a series of messages in which we ask this question, what is the core teaching of this book, of each book of the Bible? And this morning, I've, uh, we've arrived at the book of Galatians, and I've entitled the message, Would You Like Some Jesus With That? <laughs> Would You Like Some Jesus With That? Some years ago, uh, McDonald's began uh, a selling strategy we call upsizing. And you make your order of what you want only to be asked the question, Would You Like Chips With That? What about a larger size drink? Two for one deal. We call it upsizing. And it's very popular in many of the food franchises to increase what you spend. Now, it's common right across the, um, the secular world, in the world of, of sales. But when it comes to faith, I wonder whether we have done the same thing. Would you like some Jesus with that? We're moving quite smartly through the book uh, of the New Testament. The books, there's 27 of them. We've already looked at eight of them. And today is the ninth, the book of Galatians. Each book has an essential message. And a message, the question is, what does that message mean now? It's not just kind of what's, what it meant then, it's what does it mean now? Paul wrote to the church at Corinth when new believers were compromising their faith with baggage from their loose living past. This is then how you should live as a follower of Jesus, Paul says to the Corinthians. No to immorality, no to law courts, loose living, and demonstrate this new community of love that serves one another. Last week, we looked at 2 Corinthians, in which we saw Paul having a rare glimpse into the personal cost of following Jesus and the toll that it took upon him mentally, emotionally, and physically. And I gave you five C's. Do you remember what the five C's were? He opens his heart to these people who opposed and accused him, and he shows his scars and his humanity and his weaknesses and spirit-filled life. The five C's are God comforts us, first of all, and we comfort others with the comfort he gives us and the empathy. Secondly, he's carrying in his life God inside a weak container. That's the second C. Let it shine out, he says, but I'm a dead man walking because I'm a captive to Jesus, the third C. One day, he says, this canvas tent will be discarded for a new house made in heaven for me. And while I'm, meanwhile, I'm being made into a copy of Jesus who the Father wants to put on display for the world to see. The five C's of why I don't give up. The second Corinthians message. I hope you had a chance to read Galatians this week. It's a very short book, only six chapters. would only take you about 10 minutes to read it. Remember to read the books before the Sunday. In the Galatians story where we're up to today, the churches were a cluster of churches in Asia Minor where Paul goes to visit on one of his missionary journeys. Incidentally, they're the same, many of the same churches who are picked up later on in the book of Revelation. Since becoming a follower of Jesus, Paul has had a very difficult time. He spent 14 years in Arabia alone. It's during that time, I believe, the Holy Spirit spoken to Paul and showed him the essential message of what he was to preach. I think that's where Paul also discovered the, the gospel message. Why did Jesus come? Why did he die on a cross? 
in Jerusalem and what is the meaning of that. And so during these 14 years, Paul got to grips with this kind of message and the essential core message of the gospel. And it was a radical message, and it caused a lot of problems. He returned to Damascus, which was now for him enemy territory. The plot to take his life meant he had to flee from there to Jerusalem. He stayed there only two weeks because, once again, his enemies tried to kill him. He escaped to Caesarea where he took a ship to Tarsus and he stayed there for many years. He's on the run for his life because of the radical message of Jesus that was upsetting so many people. And this morning we're going to see why it was upsetting so many people. The story about what Jesus was and what his life and death meant. That was the radical message. If this man can be stopped, taken out, or discredited, the whole movement of the New Testament church would be threatened. So the problem these Galatian churches were facing, and the core issue was this, what is the gospel? It looks like a simple question, doesn't it? What is the gospel? But remember, many of these people come from what background? From a Jewish background. They were practicing all the Old Testament laws of, the, of the, the temple and the sacrificial system. And they were following what they felt was the rules of life. And then along comes Paul who says, actually, there's a new gospel and a new message. And you don't need to do all this other stuff. These people believed that the law of Moses was a condition of becoming a follower of Jesus. So there's a kind of, it's a good question because here's a whole lot of questions under the question. Is the gospel the Jewish law? Do I need to become a Jew to become a follower of Jesus? Interesting, fair question. Or do I add Jesus on? Do I kind of go, well, actually, I'll practice all the Jewish stuff and I'll, I'll, I'll give sacrificially and go and worship at the temple and then I'll believe in Jesus. So if I add Jesus on, is that, is that the gospel now? Or what about some other add-ons? What about we add on baptism? So we go, is, is the Jewish law plus Jesus plus baptism, is that the gospel? What is the gospel? What is the essential message of why Jesus came? Is Jesus plus the church? But what about communion and giving money and serving? What about all these other things? Are these all add-ons to the gospel? What exactly is this message? And there was a lot of confusion over what is the gospel. Because, you see, there were many people who were saying, you Gentiles should live like us. Kind of like Jews with Jesus tacked on, upsizing the message. Would you like some Jesus with that? Become like us, practice our laws, practice our faith, and then just add on Jesus. And there you go. You've got the, got the, you can't be wrong, you've got both, both of them together, you see. And of course, Paul was struggling with this because he was not teaching that. You see, what had happened, people came into the church, into this new community of believers, and they came just as I am believing in Jesus by faith only, then to be told that Jesus was not enough. They had to be confronted with all this other stuff. I've got to become a Jew. I've got to be circumcised. Wow, you know, that's very popular, isn't it? Yeah, right. All the men after church out the back, you know? I mean, you know, how, how many people are going to become followers of Jesus? You know, I mean, here is the issue. Become like us plus Jesus. Just add them on and you become a believer. Wow. What is the gospel? These people's argument went something like this. If only faith was required for salvation, surely this would lead to a misuse of freedom and liberty. People would do whatever they wanted, and then they'll just have a cheap prayer for forgiveness. That sounds popular, doesn't it? Now, it's got to be more than this, they said. You must show obedience to the customs and the laws of the Old Testament. It's got to show that you have a measurable amount of you know, commitment to the course. Does it? Does it? Just believing in Jesus, which is a recipe for license and loose living, these new believers, you know, if you want to become a follower of Jesus, you have to prove to us you really qualify. All right? You see, you see how this is going? And here is the problem. It's not just Jesus alone that you need to believe in. You've got all this other stuff. You've got to become a Jew. You've got to be circumcised. You've got to obey the laws. You've got to add on this, add on that. Add. Hey, what is the gospel? What is the real message? It sounds plausible, even reasonable. 
And Paul uses the closest thing to profanity in the New Testament to describe these people who teach this. The topic centered on circumcision, and Paul said they should just go and mm themselves. You read it. What it says there. I wish these people would just, because it's not the truth. This morning I'm going to give you four reasons of why the book of Galatians needs to be in the Bible. And here's the first. Faith alone puts you right with God by Calvary's cross. Even Abraham, the father of Judaism, was justified by faith. There's no room for add-ons to faith. It's Jesus alone who saves you. The cross alone saves you. Nothing else is required. The law cannot save you. I wonder if you can get that through today. The law cannot save you. The rules cannot save you. And, you know, we, I'll talk a bit about this later. We live in a very rules-based society. The rules cannot save you. Why was this message so important? Because unless this is sorted, no Gentile will ever come into the church. Because they'll go, well, I, you know, what else do I have to do? What else do I have to do? Is it Jesus plus plus? Just add on more and more and more requirements of what it takes to be a follower of Jesus. By the year 1500 AD, the abuse of power and wealth in the church had gotten to Jesus plus teaching. By then it was come to confessional, visit the church priests, be baptized on behalf of the dead, say Hail Mary's, adherence to the teachings and gratuities, pay money for your sins to be forgiven. You see? You see what happened? They just added on more and more stuff and more and more things. And people had to do more and more to become a follower of Jesus. And the Bible does not teach that, friends. The Bible says Jesus alone and faith alone puts you right with God by Calvary's cross. Jesus became cursed for you. And his life was put forward for your sin and your forgiveness. And you cannot, friends, add anything or do anything to change that. You know, coming to church doesn't make you a Christian, don't you? None of these earns you merit points with God. Faith alone in Christ's sacrifice justifies you, and that's the message we need to get straight. Isn't that a cool, a re, oh boy, I can't say that. Isn't that a great, wonderful message? Faith alone puts us right with God by Calvary's cross. The second message of Galatians is just as radical. And friends, as I look out among you, that you are culturally, culturally, and racially, and mixed up with all kinds of ages and colors, it's wonderful because the second message is this, the barriers for everyone are broken down because of Calvary's cross. Amen. Cultural barriers. We live in a rules-based world. Rules are everywhere. And we're daily reminded of the consequences if the rules are not obeyed. Rules are told to keep us safe, reduce road fatalities, reduce crime. Rules are there to help our society function better. Rules are needed for our health and education system to function and our airlines to fly without crashing. You know, how would you like to get on the plane and the pilot says, well, today I don't feel like following the rules. Today I'll just kind of do what I feel. All right, I'll take off when I feel, I'll land when I feel, don't talk to anybody on the ground. We'll just go for it. Let's have a great time. You see, rules are there for your safety. We are a society of rules. It's not surprising, really, because God was the first to put rules in place. Did you know that? In Genesis, he told Adam and Eve that they were told in no uncertain terms they could do whatever they like but avoid the tree of life. Don't eat that tree, that apple. Don't do, don't do that. And we know the outcome of the story. So God put in place rules surrounding how people could approach and live in relationship with him. The whole temple and sacrificial system was a system of rules. Bring your offering to the priest. Bring it along. Give this, and you can have your sins forgiven. Do that. The whole rules-based system is all right in the Bible, in the Old Testament. Okay. And now these people are being told what? The rules don't matter anymore. Wow. Wow. You know, no wonder Paul's in trouble because what he's doing is he's challenging the very core nature of everything these people have believed. The rules don't apply. What's even more, people who are non-Jews could join in the party. 
and receive all the benefits that up until now had belonged exclusively to them. It seemed to them that these newbies should show that they really apply in the rules as a precondition of becoming God's favorites. Galatians 3, 26 to 28. For you are children of God through faith in Christ Jesus, and all who have been made and united with Christ in baptism have put on Christ like putting on new clothes. There is no longer Jew nor Gentile, slave nor free, male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Friends, we belong to an organization and a family, let's call it that because that's a better word, where cultural barriers are broken down because of the cross of Jesus. There's no Jew and Gentile. There's no special anymore. Sociological barriers are broken down. Slave and free. Authority structures are dismantled. Gender barriers are broken down. No male or female. Hierarchical order is discarded because we're all sinners. We all come through faith in Jesus Christ. Do you see how liberating this message of freedom is? God's community, friends, is to be barrier-less because God is that. The only barrier that exists he dealt with at Calvary's cross when he took a hit for you and me. And just as quick as these barriers were dismantled by God, people started erecting them again to become exclusive. It's a radical message, and it's why Paul was a hunted man. And it's why this message is so radical that in the church of God that we believe now through Jesus Christ we come, there isn't slave nor free. There's no male or female. There's no this or that or no favorites anymore. You're all in God's family. That's a, cool, that's a wonderful message. There you go. Number three, the freedom principle is now internalized by Calvary's cross. Will this newfound freedom lead to loose living? The heart of Christianity is grace plus nothing. There are no add-ons. There's no upsizing. It's Jesus alone with nothing else. But Paul says in his concluding chapters, this does it mean we can live with this newfound freedom without rules and engage in loose living, followed by prayer in the confessional? No. Paul teaches equally and as strongly. Our newfound freedom and liberty is to choose the way of the Spirit which is for life, not the way of the flesh. Much of the issue around obeying the rules and laws centers on the issue of circumcision. And Paul essentially is saying it's not your bodies that need to be cut, it's your heart, a spiritual circumcision of all of you and not just the men. Paul says if you mix even a little amount of rules, it negates the principle of salvation by faith alone. Like yeast, it infects the whole batch of dough. The works cannot save you, but they become evidence that you've passed from life to death. So what about works? What about the good things that we do? Is God impressed with that? No, you do those because you're saved. You do those because you've had a change of heart. The motivation is different. It doesn't make you a believer. You do it because you have been changed and uh, moved into this new life in Christ Jesus. So we choose the way of the Spirit. So the issue for friends today in the book of Galatians is not, did I go to worship God today in church? Aren't I feeling good about that? Hmm. It's not, did I give money today? Does God impress with the money I give? It's not an add-on, did I share my faith today? But it is my life being led by the Spirit from within. Are the fruit of the Spirit evident because God is carrying His life in me. The freedom principle is now internalized by Calvary's cross. And the last one, the law of love releases people because of Calvary's cross. The Galatian people who were struggling with this new gospel, you should be like us, they said. Join us, but you need to think and act like we do. The Bible does not say that, friends. It says simply, join us, and the entry point is faith in Christ alone. Bring your life under the control of the Holy Spirit and then live out the law of love. Don't impose upon others what you think they should be doing. That's God's job. Don't add on to other people your experience of God and make it theirs. Don't project onto others your rules and expectations. So to the Holy Spirit in their lives. Oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? 
who has fooled you into thinking you can add anything onto what Jesus has done. My son-in-law is a consultant surgeon at Waikato Hospital. And he tells me that at times surgery needs to intervene. Sometimes when they do an operation and the infection doesn't heal up properly, they have to re-surge, re-surgery, re-whatever, re re-cut the person open. It's a better way, I guess. You know, they have to do surgery again. Because infection will, in the end, ruin and kill the person. And sometimes surgery is needed because to just kind of leave it as it is is worse. It needs to be cut out. And at times like that, you have to trust the surgeon's decision and hands. Galatians is a kind of surgery of what the gospel is not. Appendages we try to make conditions of entry and acceptance are lopped off. Cultural, economic, and gender boundaries are disarmed by their power to divide and discriminate. And we are left with a simple, powerful message, faith in Jesus alone. That's it. You don't have to do anything. There are no more rules. There's no more rules, friends. And of course, this was not a popular message for the people who heard. Would you like some Jesus with that? We've become expert at upsizing the gospel to make it more appealing or measurable. Are people measuring up to the standard of what it means to be a follower of Jesus? Do they look like a Christian? Do they act like a Christian? What do you have to do to become one of these people? Faith alone. Faith alone in Jesus. The true gospel is a very simple and radical, life-changing message. Christ died for you and rose again. End of story. Faith alone secures the salvation for you. End of story. Barriers are broken down because of the cross. End of story. Freedom and liberty is yours because of the cross. End of story. The law of love is yours to live out. End of story. You know, Jesus said there's one commandment. What is it? Love the Lord your God and your neighbor as yourself. Loving God, loving others. That's the only rule. There are no other rules. You can lop off the Old Testament. <laughs> you can leave it behind. It doesn't apply. I'm not saying there isn't things to learn from it, but I'm saying in terms of the rules, no longer. Do you remember the story Jesus told about the wedding banquet by the king and the invited guests who didn't turn up in Matthew 22? And the king told his servants, go out and invite anybody to come, the poor, the lame, the good, the bad, anybody, anybody at all, come and share in the party. Do you remember that story? This is about that. The special people that were privileged that should be coming to the party didn't arrive. They didn't turn up. And Jesus said, I want everybody to come to my wedding banquet. No matter what color you are, what race you are, what gender you are, where you come from, your cultural, your sociological background, anything, you are welcome. And the only thing you need to do is put faith in Jesus alone. That's it. That's the story of the book of Galatians. Nail your old life and cross uh, to the cross and leave it there. If you take last week's message of 2 Corinthians and today's message of Galatians, together they tell you the hard truth about what it's going to cost you to become a follower of Jesus and what you need to do to believe. And friends, it's a very simple. It's very little. There aren't any more rules. Put your faith alone in Jesus Christ. Ask him to become your Lord and save you. And that's it. And it puts your life on a solid foundation which will stand the test of time. Anything else any other strategy, any other teaching is a human construction. Friends, that's the book of Galatians. Powerful message. Would you like some Jesus with that? <laughs> Can I add something else on? You know, it's not just you want to, go to do this and this and this and give money and attend church and do all these extra stuff. Uh, whoa. It's just him alone. And it's a very simple message. Let's pray. Father God, thank you this morning 
that this book clears up very clearly the message of what we have to do to follow you. And when people try and make more requirements or more rules and put on us extra stuff, thank you that you make it so clear that this alone is the message. And it's so simple that a child can understand it and a child can believe it. Thank you. Thank you for this message. It's a radical message because all are invited. Every one of us, thank you that there are no barriers in the kingdom of God. There's not supposed to be. Everyone comes by faith, simply, in Jesus. Now, Lord, I pray for people this morning who need to make that decision, who need to come this morning and maybe say, I, I believe that. I, need to, I, need to, I hear that message and I need to say yes to it. I've been living a life of rules and rules-based life, and I now need to understand that it's simply faith in Jesus alone. And I want to say yes to that this morning. As we're bowed in prayer this morning, I'm going to ask you, if that's the desire of your heart, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand because I want to pray for you this morning. Okay? The people this morning that want to say yes to Jesus alone. That's the gospel. Friends, we have made it so difficult. We've confused the message. We've added on Jesus. We've upsized Jesus so much. You know, it's very simple. Is there people out there that want to say yes this morning? Put up your hand this morning so I can see you. Anybody up here at the top? Is everybody really clear this morning on what the essential message of the gospel is? You can't earn it. You can't buy it. You can't even prove yourself. You can simply trust him. Father God, thank you. Thank you for the book of Galatians. It settles the matter. We can now move on to other topics. We can now build a strong foundation of our lives upon him. Thank you for Emily's testimony this morning and for many other people who sit here this morning who say, I've got a story too. And it was Jesus alone that I trusted in. Now, Lord, will you go with us and help us as we together reaffirm that truth as we take communion. Help us, Lord, to each individually take the cup and the piece of bread. And as we eat it and drink it, we're saying yes to Jesus again. Yes to the very simple gospel Yes to the very hope of the world. Yes to the fact that there are no more barriers between us. Yes to the fact that we are the family of God today in this place. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to take communion. And uh, I'm going to invite the musicians to come up. They'll lead us in a song, and during the singing of the song, we're going to come forward and take the symbol, the, the cup and the bread. And you just come forward as you want to. And I want to just challenge you this morning. You know, the Bible says that we should examine ourselves before we take this. We need to be careful that we are true believers. You know, now what makes you a true believer? I've just told you. Simple faith in Christ alone. Don't add anything else on to it. There's nothing else to be added. God's not impressed with all the other stuff that you add on. He's got, this, he's got it sorted. You just need to trust what he's provided for you. Music team, come and lead us. Where are you, Jasper? You're coming. He's not here? Yes, he is. They're going to lead us in a worship song and invite you to stand and come forward and receive the communion this morning. Are you good? Good to go? Father God, thank you that in the church family there's, there's, there's no barriers anymore. We, we're just all in this together. We're all coming on our knees to you, asking for your forgiveness and cleansing. We're all thanking you this morning for this wonderful symbol of life and health and peace. We come to you this morning as your family, as your children. And we love you, and you've asked us to love one another. We do that now.
Just come forward when you're ready. together. Do you know that? Apart from singing, but this is the one thing we do that we that brings us together, that unites us as followers of Jesus. A very simple thing. It's important. ask us to lay our burdens down, lay our lives down before you. Trust in you alone. We don't, we don't merit, we don't earn this. You just give it to us. You just say, come to me, all you who are labor and I will give you rest. church family this is the one thing we do together we all drink the same cup we all eat the same cracker that unites us there are no barriers now Lord help us to take this radical message of love away from this place today Help us to keep choosing the walk of life, this new life in the Spirit. Remind us, Lord, that we can't earn your favor. Thank you that you you invite us to come alone in faith to you. Now send us out into the world, we pray, this week. Send us out to people who need to hear this radical message of life. Thank you. And all the
all the people said. Amen. 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 God bless you. Have a great week. We'll see you next Sunday.